Hey guys, I'm gonna lay out the singing elements for you. Use my website, okay? RB Singing Lessons. Dot com. I'm Rashid Hayek, okay? And I'm gonna show you the singing elements. I put this up for you guys. A summary of the singing elements, okay? Now, uh, I got this idea because um, I've already done videos about the elements, and my entire course is structured based around these singing elements. But uh, I wanted a nice summary for you, and I got reminded because I was having a conversation and a couple conversations with a few people online about um, range and it seems a lot of students have like a I think a misguided notion that range is a uh, of more importance than other areas of singing and um, sometimes like uh, Fahim and Carl and some other people have referred to anything that isn't range they seem they seem to or anything that isn't the kind of stuff that they're into learning about they seem to refer to it as artistic or stylistic and I think this is a big mistake because um, anytime you sing in a song it is one of these elements that I'm gonna sh that are on your left every time you sing you're using lyrics phrases which involve all those elements vibrato there's runs involved there might be falsetto and there's range so every time you're making a sound it's I don't know why they call it artistic but um, to me, it's like, well, every single moment you sing, it's artistic, but who cares which element is it and how do you train it? That's the main part. Range is only one of those elements. Now, there's a lot of singers that don't sing with a high range. Their, their range is not that big. For example, Michael Bublé, Craig David, Frank Sinatra. I don't know if Elvis uses a big range in a lot of his songs. Elvis Presley, um, I can't think about the singers right now, but uh, it gives you an idea like not all singers have huge ranges, do you know what I mean? Ranges and everything, and even if you don't have, if your range isn't that big, drop the key. <laughs> all you need to do is drop the key. You know what I mean? Yeah, you keep I'm not saying don't develop range. Obviously, I am saying develop it because range is right there. It's in my elements that I teach and that I recommend that you work on, right? And what it's, it occurs in songs. But with whatever range you have, if you drop the keys of a song, if a song is too high, for example, Bruno Mars, um, Brian McKnight, whoever it is, if you drop the key, you you it'll fit within your range and if it still doesn't fit then yeah you do, do need to increase your range most people do need to work on improving their range and the quality of their high notes even if they don't get higher they need to improve the thickness of their high notes but dropping the key nothing wrong with dropping the key all professional artists do it especially when they do shows it's a good way to keep your voice safe so you don't blow out your voice by singing too high too often now um let me get into these elements so you can see a bit more about them. Um, you go have a read of it as well. I'll explain it a little bit. I wanted to say something I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, one more thing about the range thing. Our ranges are all very different. Ed Sheeran can't sing the notes that Bruno Mars can sing. But Ed Sheeran's perfectly fine where he is. Ed Sheeran doesn't need to hit a high B or a high C or a C sharp or a D. And he can't. And Bruno Mars can never hit the low notes like a low G or whatever that Ed Sheeran can hear when he's singing. Bruno Mars will never sound as beautiful as when Ed Sheeran sings those notes. You just can't. If there's a certain anatomical, you know, uh, genetic makeup. We are limited in how we sound. Uh, I, co I couldn't sing as low as Buble and sound as thick and sexy as him when he's that low. It just doesn't work, right? And he couldn't sing as high as I do, as, as much as I do, like in my stamina, in my high notes without him get sounding strained or sounding um, like it's out of his comfort zone you know what I mean it wouldn't be as nice to listen to so for him to sing like me he'd have to raise he'd have to drop the key and for me to sing like him I have to raise the key because his notes are too low for me to sound sexy and, or whatever like how he sounds you know what I mean now moving on what you should focus on is all of these things when you're training all of them don't neglect any of them you have to split your training time so you're training all of them. Lyrics phrases, which includes pitch, can you do still and straight tone? 
key, are you close to the right pitch, rhythm, how long the note holds for, and pronunciation, vowels and consonants. Now within these, there's a lot of study to do when you're using a song, because changing pitch from one pitch to the other is hard. It's not easy to do accurately, and to get all these elements right for every note, for every time a song happens, every time you're singing a verse or a chorus, takes a lot of work to develop. But here's a summary of what they are. So when we're learning a song together, if we're doing a lesson or something like that, we'll usually come across these things and I'll say, let's fix these things, if you have an issue with them. Now, vibrato. Vibrato is a big one, and I categorize it by how much bounces there are. So for example, you work on vibratos that are less than or equal to four bounces is the easiest, then it gets longer, and then they get longer, and then you go from still tone, which is ah, uh, into vibrato. Uh. Now, you only need to learn this if it occurs in the kind of songs you're singing. If your singer that you like doesn't even do vibrato, don't worry about it. If you're just trying to copy them. But if they do a lot of vibrato, which most incredible singers do, it's a great skill to learn. Okay? Runs. Now, short runs. Less than or equal to six notes. So most singers tend to do runs that are like two or three notes at least. No matter what genre you're listening to. But depending on the genre, or depending on the singer's ability, you might hear more runs. So some rock singers I've heard do incredible runs, opera singers can do incredible runs. So it's not just R&B here, I know I'm very R&B oriented, but runs aren't only for R&B singers. But R&B singers tend to really love runs. So Christina Aguilera, Beyonce, um, Boyz II Men, Mariah Carey, most opera singers kill runs, any opera music you listen to. They all love runs, they're all in, really into runs, okay? So um, that's how I categorize them, by how many they are, okay? Falsetto, your low falsetto, your, your kind of medium range falsetto, and your very high falsetto, and then blending from your chest into your falsetto. And range, um, full high voice, so your, you know, your, your belt kind of voice at all volumes, at like low, mid, and high, and loud volumes, you thinned out high voice, which is like, it's kind of like you're going higher and higher, but you're not putting all that weight that you do when you're using the full high voice, like it doesn't sound as thick and heavy, so it's like something you train, because usually you'll have your full high voice to a certain area, and then you can still, you train your thin high voice, which enables you to get a fuller voice in those notes with time, okay, um, mid-range, which is kind of way you normally maybe speak most of the time when you're speaking like me right now and your low range when you're kind of being, when you're speaking when you're more and you're relaxed very relaxed it's not a loud environment like it is now trains and buses and cars and birds it's all loud around me right so I'm speaking louder than I normally do but when I'm at home just speaking normally I'll probably just speak like this kind of range you know and then you let your low range all right so all those elements are really important they all play a role in nearly every song. I mean, not every song has falsetto, not every song has high range, not every song has lots of runs, but most songs have the lyric phrase section and vibrato section. So if I was you, I would focus all my effort on these two first, because they will make you sound like you know how to sing. Let me give you an example. I was checking this girl next door when her parents went out. She phoned say, hey boy, come on right around. I'm just singing in my comfortable range, not high, not low, not doing lots of runs. It's just it's just all these elements, vibrato and the pitch, key, rhythm, pronunciation. They won't make you sound like you know how to sing. And all the other stuff kind of gets more advanced. Yeah, more advanced, doing runs, doing falsetto, breaking to falsetto, which is kind of, falsetto is kind of related to range, you know what I mean? And then range, going really high, all that kind of stuff. All right? But ideally, work on all of them work on all of them, don't neglect anything, don't be like I'm gonna do one thing to, for year, for a couple years and then I'll move on to something, no, work on all of them at the same time, I made a mistake of neglecting some things at the time because I didn't really understand how to structure it all, And but um, I made the mistake of like doing one thing for a while because I didn't know how to train the other stuff, so you can get my course, you can come do lessons, you can learn how to train everything, train it all at the same time, so all your skills are developing, so in a couple years you'll be like, overall better at all the skills so whatever song you're choosing to sing you'll be able to do it you know what i mean all right guys i'm Richard hayek i hope this helps you and i'll see you next time